This is part six of the Reed 4C 6-inch Vice Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part five, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we will complete the assembly. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Starting with the static jaw, we're going to be coating it with the super slick stuff. Again, you can get this stuff from Lowe's, Ace Hardware, even on Amazon. It's an excellent protectant. I've used it on my Reed vise, which is a raw vise as well. And I've only had to coat it that first time. And for two years now, zero rust. So all you do is spray it on and then wipe it off. That leaves a nice coating. We're going to do the same with the base. And then we'll do the same with the dynamic jaw. Next, we're going to go ahead and lubricate the base. And for this, we're using some super lube. Love this stuff. It's a synthetic grease. And we're basically going to lube the inside where the teeth are, as well as both of the locks and the, uh, the two rings on top that are milled. We'll install the static jaw on top of the base. And then we'll lube the inside threads of the two swivel locks and then install them. And one of these swivel locks, I didn't... Uh, hit that uh, handle hard enough, I guess, and it ends up coming out at one point. Next, we're going to lube the uh, milled surfaces or ways inside the static jaw. This is what the dynamic jaw slides on. And next, we'll install the pipe insert into the static jaw. I had to play around with these pins a little bit. That top one just wanted to fight with me, but no big deal. We ended up driving it back out, lubing it up a little with the super lube and then driving it back in. I'd rather these be hard to get in and out than to have them loose in there. Just making sure they're even on both sides. If you're going to do this, make sure you're using brass tipped tools, the punches and the mallet there. Next, we'll install the jaw insert for the static jaw, just like we did before. And this is why we indexed those jaws when we originally took them off so that we knew where they went. So next, I'm going to go ahead and lube up the ways or the dovetail area on the inside where the main vice nut goes. And then we'll lube up the opening on the bottom and the threaded area on the inside of that for the center bolt. And we'll install that center bolt. It's not going to screw down all the way right now because we've got the, uh, the locks locked down. So we loosen up those locks and then we can Tighten down that center bolt. And 
And just like with the jaw inserts, we probably could have put some, uh, some medium strength thread locker on this and the jaw insert screws, but eh, who cares? It'll be fine. I normally don't use it on my vices, so just making sure that works. And as you can see on the left-hand side there, the handle is missing from that lock nut. I'll take that off screen and uh, hit it with a hammer a couple times and get it installed. And now we can reinstall it. Smack that with the rubber end of the mallet. And we're good to hook. Next, we'll install the pipe insert for the dynamic jaw. Again, the top pin is the one that gives me trouble here, but I managed to get it squared away. And we'll just even those out. And we'll install the jaw insert. And next we will lube up the main vice nut. So I'm going to lube up the uh, dovetail area, the milled surface area, using super lube. And then I'm going to lube up the threaded area on the inside with a different grease altogether. So this is Mystic, it's an NLGI grease, and uh, I think it's Mystic number two. It's got Molly in it. I use this when I'm reassembling chucks and stuff like that. Uh, it's a great grease. So we're going to use this, yeah, number two. Um, so we're just going to lube up those threads inside the main vice nut. And then we'll install the nut. And then we'll install the roll pin and the little screw that uh, Jordan had modified it with. So this is turbine oil, and this is what we're going to lube up the thrust bearing with. We've got those two shims, one that goes on each side of that thrust bearing. So we'll lube up the thrust bearing and the shims. And then lube up that entire opening there that they're going to reside in. You can get this uh, turbine oil at uh, most of your Ace Hardware stores. And then we're going to use the Mystic on that bore 
just past where the thrust bearing sits. Because the spindle rides in that bore. Next, we'll lube up the two halves of the split nut. We just need to lube up the inside of them. And then we'll lube up that threaded area you can see inside the opening on the uh, dynamic jaw there. Now we'll lube up using the Mystic, the uh, spindle. And then that area right there, and that's where the split nut's going to sit. And we can install the spindle. And then the split nut. So the threads for the split nut need to be facing out. Like I've got them. And just kind of holding all that together, you can get that split nut started. And once it's started, it'll spin on there no problem. We'll be making a further adjustment to this in a little bit. Next, we'll install the dynamic jaw into the static jaw. And because we don't have the split nut tightened down all the way, the spindle is actually leaning down. So we've got to reach up under there and kind of align it with the nut that's inside the static jaw. And then we can crank it down. Then we can adjust, make a final adjustment to that uh, split nut. Get any take up there that we need. Make sure everything is spinning nice and smooth. It's not binding up too much. We don't want it loose, but we also don't want it to bind up. And we can tighten down that split nut just using a punch. Brass one would be best. And as you tighten it down, you'll you'll start to feel that it's grabbing on the spindle, preventing the spindle from spinning freely. So I like to go a little bit too tight and then back it off a little. Right there is probably pretty good. So that split nut would just work itself loose over time if it weren't for the locking screw that locks it in place. And so we need to install that next. And that goes in the hole that's next to the oil port. And so again, you're going to have to tighten it down and then back it off a little. And then check that the spindle spins freely. Because if this screw is too tight, then the spindle gets impinged. too tight. Still too tight. Next, we've got the handle and we'll just go ahead and spin the ball off of one end 
And Jordan had O-rings on the handle to cut down on the banging of it as it slid from one end to the other. We'll just reinstall those O-rings. And then we can put the end ball back on. Good to hook. So we're just going to give everything kind of a Testy test here to make sure everything's moving like butter. I think we need to make just a little bit of an adjustment to that locking screw. Now we're cooking with gas. All right, so we'll add a little bit of oil in there to where that thrust bearing is. Again, this is the turbine oil. And it's at this point that I realized I did not paint the, uh, the lettering there for oil port. So I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, acetone to clean up this area. We need to wipe up that oil. Make sure it's not going to weep out of there. Clean up that lettering with the acetone. And then we can use a paint pen and paint the oil. We'll let that dry after we painted it and then we'll come back and hit that off camera with some of that super slick stuff to just lock all that down. Make sure nothing's going to corrode or rust in there. All right. So Jordan also had some copper jaws for this. I cleaned those up and we're going to install those. So this is one of the copper jaws. And if you ever buy any, they usually come about bent like they are right now. And you can just bend them around with a uh, dead blow rubber mallet. Like so. I've got these on my reed and I love them. And I think they make the Vice look that much cooler with them on there. They come right off if you need to pull them off, so no big deal. So this is where we started. This was the vice as it was dropped off at my house. And decent amount of rust on there. Decent amount of paint left on it. 
And this is the finished vise. So I've enjoyed working on this series. I always like working on vices. It's the biggest vice I've ever worked on, though. Really cool vice. The 4C. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please like and subscribe. Not quite sure what I've got lined up next. I've got several things that I can do, but I haven't decided what we are going to do. So as always, I appreciate the support. If you've got comments or questions, leave them in the section below. And I will see you next time.